Good morning, uh, Elmo United Methodist Church and those others who are who are watching this. Um, uh, thank you for for joining. Uh, a couple of things before we get started. Uh, our Christmas Eve service was fabulous, excellent. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I'm glad to everyone who came and participated, and it was it was a good evening. It was good to see us all again in the church building and. Um, for those of you afterward, we, we talked about uh, returning to in-person worship. And uh, fortunately, the uh, guidelines from the Missouri Conference uh, gave us a little wiggle room to do that. Uh, knowing our uh, typical size of congregation and the size of the church we're in, uh, we could easily uh, separate from all the pews. And of course, we wear masks anyway. So. Uh, we had that discussion uh, after Christmas Eve, and uh, I really think people want to go back. Of course, I want to go back. I think we all want to go back. So uh, we should uh, continue those discussions, um, find the, the right Sunday to do that. Cause, um, uh, cause I think it just make it just make us feel normal again. And with the uh, introduction of the va <clears throat> excuse me, with the introduction of the vaccine, uh, I'm optimistic that uh, over time. Uh, the vaccines momentum will will grow and hopefully in, in months this the, the threat of the virus will be minimal so uh, again let's continue those discussions about returning to church and again to remind you uh, the Missouri conference did give us some a little bit of leeway to go back and knowing our, our size of our congregation we could we could comfortably and safely return to church so um, if you have any questions or comments uh, please give me a call or call destiny and we will we'll get that started again so uh, our um, our New Testament reading for this week uh, continues with uh, with the whole birth of Christ we all hopefully wonderfully celebrated Christmas on on Friday I know I did with my family and uh, we continue with the arrival of Jesus here on earth and uh, the scripture uh, reading this week comes from John 1, 1 through 18. I'll, I'll read that, then I'll go into my, to my own message uh, based on this. In the beginning uh, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was not in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. Uh, he himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. These are the word of the Lord. <clears throat> uh, sometimes firsts are pretty grand. On July 4th, uh, 1776, England's, England's King George III wrote in his diary, Nothing of importance this day. When the news of the Declaration of Independence reached him, he could still not know how wrong he had been. The political philosophy of social compact, rights, and limited government that generated the Declaration of Independence 
also spurred the most important creative and dynamic constitutional achievements in history. The Declaration itself was merely the beginning. Within 13 years, Americans invented or first institutionalized a Bill of Right against, of all, against all branches of government, the written constitution, the judicial review, and a solution to the colonial problem, which was how to admit territories to the Union fully equal to the original 13 colonies. Then sometimes firsts are not exciting as they could have been. Uh, according to their journals, which I own, uh, explores, I, I own a copy of, I should say, according to their journals, explores Lewis and Clark didn't leave from St. Louis the same time to research uh, Thomas Jefferson's Louisiana Purchase. Clark left before Lewis, as he had, as Lewis had unfinished business in St. Louis, but Lewis caught up with him 24 miles later. But uh, what we as Christians have in front of us now, based on this week's New Testament reading, we have a first that will never be done again and something that we must hold dearly. We have the arrival of our Savior. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Does that sound familiar? Go back to the beginning in Genesis, another first. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he, was sep and he separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Sure, we, we probably think of it at the beginning of earth and the sun, but knowing what Jesus' purpose is, as stated in John 1, maybe the first verses in Genesis are also symbolic of Jesus' anticipated arrival, even though we haven't got to that point yet in the Old Testament. And there are implying scriptures, but maybe, just maybe, Jesus is also depicted in Genesis. We just don't know it yet. But what is explained in John is to be taken much differently. Take it from a literal sense, especially verse 18. Jesus is here. The Gospel of John describes the Jesus as the Word, of God. Jesus is the message or the definition of God. Words are tangible symbols of ideas both for our eyes and our ears. The fact that God came in human form is pretty critical. Jesus is a human being who experiences our struggles as stated in Hebrews 4.15, one to whom we can relate. Here's, here is Hebrews 4.15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who, who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let's review Jesus' temptation moments in Matthew 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The temper the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell those stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God 
and serve him only. The devil left and the angels came and attended him. Indeed, Jesus is one of us here on earth with some very specific exceptions. The scripture explained how he was tempted. We know of other scriptures where he showed anger, like when he turned over the tables. We know Jesus has compassion as he helped others recover from illness and even death. Jesus wept. That's the shortest scripture in the Bible. We have all cried. Again, all of that shows he is like us. We need to return the favor and be more like him. Author Mark Twain said, The best tool to use against temptation is to be a coward. Channel our anger the right way when we see injustice. Help others in time of need. And don't ever be afraid to cry. We can relate to Jesus from those scriptures in multiple ways. It starts at birth. Look at the anticipation of Jesus' birth. Mary was unexpectedly told by Gabriel of her pregnancy with Jesus. Elizabeth, who was carrying John at the same time, also showed excitement. John jumped within Elizabeth's womb, knowing Mary was close by. The wise men also had been moved to go and find the Messiah by following the star. And for all the attention the conjunction received last week, its brilliant example of a thousand years later, the wise men truly followed an unusual bright spot in the sky. I hope all of our births were anticipated, anticipated by our parents and families. I was the third of five children by my parents. My first child had quite the excitement leading up to his birth. I'll save that story for another day. I hope when we hear of Jesus' birth every Christmas, we can also take a moment to reminisce and reflect on other people in our lives, starting with the day they were born. If we have excitement for other births, we need to have even more excitement for the birth and arrival of Jesus. We give life to our children. If we believe, Jesus will give us eternal life. The scripture reads, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through the world was made through him, but the world did not recognize him. As Christians, the world is not to want to recognize us. That's what makes up the beauty of being a Christian. We are constantly reminded to always do the Christian thing. We can't help if we have an audience watching us at those times. We may be the person who prevents another from falling in temptation by our own words and actions. That makes us Christ-like as he prevented himself from temptation. But again, we are not Jesus. We will still make our mistakes. The fewer we make and the more we help others to prevent their problems, the better. The point is our Christian ways are to help improve our time here on earth and the improvements come in various ways. We know of believers who genuinely give freely to those in need. We are to connect with those in prison. We not only follow the Ten Commandments, but we note others who may have slipped and need restoration. We can provide that restoration through forgiveness, another Christ-like moment. The world is full of temptation and non-Christian things. We are to constantly try to be our best, to rise above and help others do the same, all in the name of Christ. The world will try and diminish that, but our Savior in heaven will know what we're doing. The Reverend Joe Nassau, a Catholic priest, uh, put it this way. Early in his term, Pope Francis admonished priests and bishops to be shepherds with the smell of the sheep, to come down from pedestals, to serve and stand with the poor. Shepherds were the first to receive the birth announcement, not the insiders, not the royalty, not the government officials, because they were the ultimate outsiders. Remember, the Christmas story says Mary and Joseph were in town to register for a census. There was no need for shepherds to register because they did not count. The shepherds were homeless. The ones who smell, not many opportunities to jump in the tub, and a reputation for rugged individualism and rigid commitment to their flocks forced them to move to the outskirts of society. Do not be afraid, the angel tells them, and gives them a sign that must have made them feel at home. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger.
Shepherds often sought shelter from bad weather in barns and sheds. They probably slept on bells of hay, keeping one eye open for a predator sneaking up on their unsuspecting sheep. The child we celebrate at Christmas would grow up and identify himself as the good shepherd and would spend his life seeking out and saving the lost until he was crucified outside the gates of the holy city, the place where those who didn't count were left to die. The shepherds were the first to experience Jesus because the crib and the cross are inseparable. We must be like those shepherds. We must be humble in our ways, knowing we believe in something greater than us. Like those shepherds, we must keep an eye out for those predators that want to destroy our faith. And we must also seek others who are lost and show them the way to Jesus. He is born. Amen. Again, thank you uh, for listening today. Uh, again, I'm going to say we're, uh, we want to start some discussion about returning to uh, in-person service. So um, I'm sure all Destiny and I will be uh, reaching out to others and those will be calling us. So uh, please keep in touch. Uh, please keep uh, watch on our Facebook page and uh, we'll, we'll show you, we'll tell you what's going on and we'll let you know. Again, uh, thank you for, for watching and listening this week and we'll see you again.